so far we have covered finite difference, finite element, finite volume methods and also some aspects of set of moments have been covered. We have been taught in schools and also in uh, our undergraduation and most of people also go through post graduation and research looking at electromagnetics purely from the field theory point of view. There is nothing wrong in it, but is there is something different that we can do about it. Can we model electromagnetic problems using different set of tools? If there are different set of tools what they are and how one can understand the significance and also the practical use of such tools for any applications in engineering. So that is the main theme of our discussion today. So we are going to go and look into problem specifications in electromagnetics, but we are going to use a different set of tools. So what are these tools? I call them algebraic topological methods because it comes from a domain of research called as algebraic topology which is quite known to theoretical physicists and mathematicians. To a larger extent the domain of algebraic topology is unknown to engineers and practicing let us say applied physicist community. The reason is simple they have been using a set of languages which is quite difficult for engineers to follow and secondly its formulation is so heavy and complex that most of the engineers find it quite foreign. In some aspect they are even quite put down by the idea of looking into it and seeing the practical value of it. So in this chapter what I am going to do is I am going to make it as simple as possible using simple words, simple words in the sense simple concepts and simple ideas that are known to engineers and based on that I am going to build the idea. So the entire tool set is called as algebraic topological method. What we are going to look into it is the question of what is the definition of field and why do I need it and basically questioning also the need for using fields like electric field, magnetic field, density fields and, and so on and so forth. So basically we are going to reanalyze or fundamentally ask the question what is the need for going into the field theory or use any of the vectorial notations and vectorial calculus. The second thing is we are going to set the basis for our algebraic topological method. In other words the motivation uh, for going into algebraic topological method. As you might know most of our experiments have discrete set of measurements and uh, from the discrete set we go into a continuous field, continuous domain where we use partial differential equations to model those physics. And then when we do numerical methods or computational electromagnetics to be specific we try to go back again to the discrete domain. So the basic question is what is the need for this continuous PDEs and then finally in this first set of module we are going to look into the basic theory behind algebraic topology. In specific we will look into some of the key definitions that we will be using in modeling electromagnetic problem. With that being said let us start with the introduction. So you might know that any electromagnetic problem let us say we have a set of fields given we call them as initial conditions at time t equal to 0 and we have certain boundary conditions also given and based on that we try to solve our usual Maxwell equation. So the question here is we are basically using E and H which are vectors and again E and H they are vectors. So always we are going into a vectors and secondly we are using the vectorial calculus and partial differential equations to model the Maxwell equation. Fundamentally the question is 
what is the need for or why do we always use vector calculus. In other words what is the need for vector calculus. This question arises from the fact that most of our measurements in fact in the case of electromagnetics all our measurements are scalar quantities whether it is current, voltage, fluxes, whether it is magnetic flux or electric flux they are all even potential for the matter of fact they are all scalar quantities and we cannot even measure electric field, magnetic field directly we can deduce them mathematically. So if that being the case why do we start with vectorial notations and vectorial calculus and the second question that we try to ask is as we said most of our measurements are based on scalar quantities why do we normally go for vectorial quantities. The second question is very much related to the fact that we can only deduce them but not measure them. That being said this is the basic questions you have to try to understand before we go into modeling the entire electromagnetic equation using scalar quantities. The real reason is we have been asked or we have been taught to use vector calculus because the domain of electromagnetics is dominated by mathematicians in the early stage of its development. For example Maxwell himself who is a mathematician by training and they have well defined and also elaborately uh, developed theory of uh, differential equations and the vector calculus basically can be applied or used along with PDEs or differential equations in a much more natural way and you can do a lot of those mathematical manipulations like you know tending to infinity or tending to 0 and how you map uh, differentiability, what are the requirements of the differentiability and so on and so forth. Although you might know that in reality these might not be the case for example there might be a lot of discontinuous parameters, there might be discontinuous fields. So in these kind of situations the artificial imposement or the artificial constraints on uh, differentiability, continuous differentiability they are only mathematically needed because you can only use differential equation or vector calculus under those conditions. So that being case there is no real physical reason behind using vector calculus or differential equation. The reasoning is purely mathematical because those mathematical tools have been already developed it is easy for us to take them and use them. But nobody have really asked the question is it fundamentally the need I mean that being said in the last 56 years. There is a group of researchers from network theory and uh, you know also circuit theory they have started using uh, or they have been using uh, algebraic topology in one way or the other. But they have been you know quite a narrow set of researchers so the entire idea did not really uh, get momentum across uh, electromagnetics community in general. So that is one of the main introduction that I would like to give and with that introduction we will look into the motivation that we have to build for going into this particular set of problems. So let us go into the motivation. The motivation is we have a physical problem and this physical problem is defined or basically available from experimental measurements or you know experimental facts. Once we have this physical problem we are trying to model this physical measurables into differential equations which is again in the differential setting this is in a continuous space. Once we are here we get back from differential equation to difference equation which is basically the algebraic equation using one of those methods that we have already studied either finite difference method or collocation, boundary element, spectral method, edge element, finite volume so on and so forth. So it is like if you see this as a ocean you are jumping deep into it and then going back again to the surface. So this is a fundamentally a flawed assumption. This assumption can be questioned by changing the view of setting the problem at the first place. What we are going to do now is we have a physical problem which is based on discrete set of measurements from here 
we are going to directly go into the algebraic equation which is also in the discrete set of equations and then directly get numerical solution. So what does it mean? What we mean here is so we have three set of things one is experiment we have here a system model and then we have numerical results. So the earlier approach is or even today this is discrete this could be continuous or discrete this is always discrete. So what we are doing now is we are not going to take the PDE route which is here we are going to take a discrete route and this discrete route what we will get here is basically the algebraic topological formulation for Maxwell equations. So what we need is finally to get the algebraic equation that we can numerically solve or computationally solve using a computer. So if this is done we are able to do the same thing what one can do in the case of finite volume or finite difference or finite element methods. So with that as a basis or the motivation or end goal we are going to go and look into the nitty gritties the fundamental theoretical framework. So we will look into some of the concepts that are needed for us to uh, model these problems uh, using discrete set of equations and also using only scalar quantities. So we are going to learn some or relearn in fact I should use the word relearn some of the definitions of field quantities using our new set of tools. So with this motivation we will go into the next module thank you.